Terrence Crawford is the target of Jose Ramirez, the 140-pound WBO and WBC champion. And this is actually a top-level fight that Terrence Crawford might actually be able to get. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. Terrence Crawford is the pound for pound. I'm doing it again. I'm going to do it every video too until somebody shows me otherwise. Terrence Crawford is the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. He is the former lightweight champion, the former 140 pound undisputed champion and the current WBO 147 pound champion. He's undefeated. He's got a very long, he's got a He's got a knocked out everybody that he's fought since he unified the 140 pound championship with Victor Postal. And unfortunately, though, is not really in the position to get fights with the top, the other top guys at 147 pounds. And as a result, he gets a lot of what I believe to be justified critiques about his position as the number one welterweight or whether or not he is, you know, the top welterweight in boxing. Now, we know that the majority of those issues around tight around a lot of those issues around his competition level have to do with the fact that Terrence Crawford is the fighter fights for top ranked promotions and the majority, the rest of the champions at 147 pounds and the top contenders at 147 pounds fight for uh, the premier boxing champions, the PBC, the organization that is aligned with with Showtime and Fox and Al and Al Heyman run. So that, I believe, is the reason why Terrence Crawford has not been able to show that he's the best guy at 147 pounds. There's also a big issues uh, issues around Terrence Crawford and Bob Arum around what's going on in boxing and specifically you know, the amount of money that can be generated from from fights because people believe that the fights are, you know, for a while that we're going to be getting fights, but fights without any fans. And when you have less fans there, you have less money, you know, from the gate. And if you have less money to uh, for the gate, then clearly there's less money to pay fighters. As a result, it'll be more difficult to get high level fighters uh, to fight one another. Now, that. I do believe is going to be the case for a, for a little while. I hope that it ends towards the beginning. You know, I hope that it can take place maybe in January or February of 20 of 2021 that we can get back to regular type of boxing. But, you know, who knows, man, with this type of the type of people that we have, the type of um, state governance that we have where they keep reopening the state you're going to more than likely have another big breakout of the virus that is causing us to be in this problem. So, you know, who knows? But looking forward into the time when we do have uh, where we do have the ability to have boxing ongoing, a fight between R Jose Ramirez and Terrence Crawford would seem to be a real fight that can take place for Terrence Crawford at 147 pounds. And the main reason for that is that Terrence Crawford is and Jose Ramirez are both signed by Top Rank. And Top Rank, one of the MOs for Top Rank are these, the modus operandi. Uh, they, their guys tend to fight, tend to fight, not exclusively, but tend to fight for the WBO championship. And they like to have in in house fights where both guys are promoted by the same or both promoted by top rank so top rank winds up the winner any way you cut it if Jose Ramirez wins uh top rank still has the belt if Terrence Crawford wins top rank still has the belt and and top rank is the only promoter and ESPN is the only network that is going to be making any money off the fight. That's the way the top rank used that oftentimes operates unless a fight is there's a fight that's so big that the, their monetary interest in it overshadows that that general tendency uh, of their tendency to set up fights in the manner that I just described. So will this fight with with Jose Ramirez and versus Terrence Crawford happen at 147 pounds? 
Um, a couple things need to happen, I do believe, in order for that, in order for that fight to be realistic. One, I have to see that top rank and that match room, excuse me, top rank makes the fight between Jose Ramirez and Josh Taylor. If they make that fight, actually make that fight, then I'll believe that Jose Ramirez versus Terrence Crawford is a possibility. Until they actually make that fight, I doubt it. And let me explain to you why that is. Because, and that that's because that would be an incident where they have two prime fighters, two fighters in their prime, who are the top and a weight class fighting each other. And where I've seen top rank do before, when the same situation was ordered, well, it's smaller. It was a unification fight, or was, excuse me, it was a fight for the WBC between Regis Progre and uh, Jose Ramirez. That, and this is when when Regis Progre was undefeated, and he was, and he still looks like he's very, very good. But it was before the Josh Taylor fight happened, and Regis Progre, you didn't know who would be favored between Regis Progre and Jose Ramirez. And top rank, once Jose Ramirez got that WBC belt, because he wasn't supposed to get the WBC belt originally, it was supposed to be a series of fights that led up to Regis Progre and Jose Ramirez and, and Jose Ramirez fighting for the WBC belt. But what Bob Arum and the WBC did was they were able to change the fight between Jose Ramirez and I do believe Emiri Mom. It from a contender to a vacant title, and then they uh, to fight for the vacant title, and that was the title. I do who relinquished that belt. I don't think that was Terrence Crawford who relinquished the WBC belt, 140 pound belt. I don't know who that is that relinquished. It might have been Terrence Crawford. Actually, it might have been during the time where Ter Terrence Crawford relinquished that WBC belt and moved up, and those guys were fighting for the vacated belt for. Terrence Crawford's vac uh, vacated WBC belt. More than likely, that's what that that's what that was. But anyway, that fight didn't happen. I would tend to believe that the fight between Jose Ramirez and Josh Taylor wouldn't happen until Bob Arum has had those guys both fight multiple guys as a champion to get multiple, you know, get four or five events out of whether it's two apiece or three for one guy and two for the other, whatever the case was, I would suspect that what he would do is try to is try to milk Josh Taylor's championship and Jose Ramirez championship for several fights and then eventually make those guys meet if they make a meet at all. Right. And while one guy moves up and wait. So if Bob Arum is in the is of the frame of mind to pit Josh Taylor and Jose Ramirez together and they actually fight and say Jose Ramirez wins, then I believe that Jose, that 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 Bob Arum is would be serious about making a fight between Terrence Crawford and Jose Ramirez. Because that would tell me, number one, that he has enough faith in Jose Ramirez to be able to win that fight because he was able to. Uh, defeat uh, Josh Taylor. Um, and it would show me that Bob Aaron was more willing to take risks than I otherwise would have thought. Now, as far as the fight with Terrence Crawford and Jose Ramirez, this is one of the, 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 this is the sadder part of this scenario. And I don't believe that is that it really, I don't put it firmly on, on Terrence Crawford, that this is the fact, but if at least this is my opinion, I won't say it's fact because it's clearly an opinion. If Terrence Crawford were to fight Jose Ramirez, that would be after Jose Ramirez unified the 140 pound division and he moved up. That would, because I do believe I'd take Jose Ramirez over Josh Taylor, provided that Jose Ramirez does not go fight, does not go fight in Scotland, right? For to have that fight, because I don't think he's going to get the call out there. Regardless, if he was able to do that and he, and Jose Ramirez was able to do that, and he fought in the Terrence Crawford fight was made. I think that that would be the most significant fight of Terrence Crawford's career. I think it would be more significant than than his previous most significant fight, which, in my opinion, was the Yuri Yokas Gamboa fight and the Victor and the Victor Postal fight. I think that Jose Ramirez is a more of a challenge to Terrence Crawford than than clearly than Julius and Dungo was bigger challenge than Felix Diaz was. Bigger challenge than Victor Postal was, and 
or Yoriokas Gamboa was for Terrence Crawford at 147 pounds. Uh, Jose Ramirez can box. He's shown in his recent fights that he can sit down on his punches more so than I thought he did. He actually showed decent power. And I think that that would be, again, that would be Terrence Crawford's biggest fight. Now, unfortunately, a fight between with Jose Ramirez at 140 pounds would still be against maybe the fourth or fifth guy, fifth best guy in the welterweight division, right? It would still be the fourth or fifth, fifth guy. I'm not taking uh, Jose Ramirez over Sean Porter, Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia, Errol Spence Jr., Manny Pacquiao. I might, I think he might have trouble, quite honestly, with Virgil Ortiz uh, out of Texas and and Jerron Ennis. Um, who are more inexperienced fighters than he than he is. So, you know, although I would really like to see the fight, and I think that it is a good, it's about as best that you can hope for out of Terrence Crawford, still quite not quite enough for me. And I would prefer that he would fight somebody like a Sean Porter, like a Yordanis Ugas, even a Kell Brook, somebody that is forced, that is that has proven themselves at 147 pounds, and I don't want to wait a long uh, wait around a long time to see it happen. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think, and with that, I'm out. Peace.